wow, what a fantastic weekend for heavyweight boxing. We saw, for one, the return of David the Haymaker Hay. On the 16th of January, he fought Mark DeMori and completely obliterated him within one round. Two minutes, 11 seconds, I believe it was. Now, I was there. Fantastic atmosphere, fantastic crowd. Everybody was buzzing to see him come back. And he did really, really well. I didn't expect anything less, if you want me to be honest, because he fought somebody in Mark DeMori. Not a fantastic fighter, but let's face it, after three and a half years out, David Hay has a lot of ring rust and he needs to kind of get that out of his system. So that was a good fight for him. The main thing I wanted to see was whether or not David Hay had the sharpness, the power, the quickness. And it seems that he does very, very early to say at the moment. But it's good to see the Haymaker back, especially now as the heavyweight division is warming up. So watch this space. <clears throat> he was talking about Anthony Joshua. And fighting Anthony Joshua in 2016. Will that happen? We don't know. Who is he fighting next? We don't know. But the Haymaker is back and that's very good news. Also, we had Deontay Wilder defending his WBTBC title against Spilka. Spilka showing a lot of spirit. Full maximum respect to him. And Deontay Wilder managed to get him out there in the ninth round with a fantastic knockout. Spilka recovering well. And he fought his heart out and I've got to have um, show maximum respect to him. Now, it all kicked off. It was all kicking off that evening. Tyson Fury showed up and he just jumped into the ring, interrupted Deontay Wilder's interview. And he was saying that he was ready to fight Deontay Wilder in his backyard in the States. Deontay Wilder, likewise, criticizing Tyson Fury even suggested he's willing to come to the UK to fight Tyson Fury and it just kicked off. I heard Tyson Fury was even um, giving it to uh, Carl Froch and I think the two men had to be separated and also uh, Tyson Fury actually got to meet his idol Mike Tyson. They share the same name in the crowd and um, it was it was all the stars were out. Lennox Lewis was there, everybody was there and it sounded like an amazing light from what I can see. So... Where does that leave Tyson Fury versus Deontay Wilder? Well, Deontay Wilder has a mandatory now. He has to fight Alexander, Alexander Povetkin. And he is really going to be Deontay Wilder's biggest, biggest threat or test to date. I mean, Deontay Wilder defeated Bermain Stavern to win the WBC title. He's had three title defences. And now he's due to face the mandatory Alexander Povetkin. Now, we all know Povetkin is a tough, tough heavyweight. He's very, very strong. And this will definitely be Deontay Wilder's toughest, date to te to the toughest test to date. So Deontay Wilder has to get him out of the way. Also, he has to get um, uh, Tyson Fury has to get uh, Vladimir Klitschko out of the way because um, they both um, have to fight one more time before they can potentially get it on. So if Tyson Fury wins his fight against Vladimir Klitschko and um, Deontay Wilder wins his fight against Alexander Povetkin, then the two can get it on. And that is going to be a mega, mega, mega fight. Now, I'm not writing off Alexander Povetkin and I'm definitely not writing off Vladimir Klitschko. Povetkin is a dangerous opponent. <clears throat> they were supposed to fight some time ago. Some things went wrong. It didn't materialise, but it looks like Deontay Wilder could be fighting him next. And if Tyson Fury beats Vladimir Klitschko in the rematch, which isn't going to be easy, then you can definitely guarantee that there will be a showdown, a big uni unification fight between Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder. But, I mean, you know, anything can happen in boxing. As we know, Tyson Fury beat Vladimir Klitschko. I just want a little touch, touch, um, touch on that basically before we carry on. Um, before Tyson Fury fought Vladimir Klitschko, nobody gave him a hope in hell. Nobody even thought that Tyson Fury would beat Vladimir Klitschko. They were saying he was going to knock him out in three rounds, and that Tyson Fury was, you know, not on his level, and all this and that. Now, I personally have seen Tyson Fury fight many times. I followed him earlier on in his career. And I'll tell you what, I always thought that he was a good fighter. He's tall, he's awkward, he can fight both hands, southpaw, orthodox, and his footwork, his foot movement is actually very good. And, um, you know, <clears throat> I saw Vladimir Klitschko's fight against Bright Jennings, and 
I watched that fight and I thought, man, he looked quite poor. He was scared to throw punches. He was scared to throw to throw big punches just in case he got caught with a big shot. And he was very, very dubious and he didn't commit to many punches. He was just jabbing and grabbing. Bryant Jennings come out of that fight completely brimming with confidence, not a scratch on his face. And I said to myself, if Vladimir Klitschko fights this way, like he did against Brian Jennings, if he fights like that against Tyson Fury, Tyson Fury is likely to beat him or has a very, very good chance. If you want me to be honest, hand on heart, I didn't think that Tyson Fury was going to beat Vladimir Klitschko. I didn't think it was going to be one or two round KO. I thought it was going to go into the later part of the fight. I thought Vladimir was going to win it by a unanimous decision on points or possibly a knockout. Reason being, when uh, Tyson Fury got um, hit by Steve Cunningham, uh, he was a cruiserweight, moved up to heavyweight, and he knocked Tyson Fury down. But Tyson Fury, being the gypsy warrior that he is, got up and came back to win the fight. So I was thinking to myself, well, <clears throat> if he can get dropped by a former cruiserweight in Cunningham, then what's, Cl what's Cl Dr. Steelhammer actually going to going to be like when he lands on 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 uh, Tyson Fury you know is he going to get up from one of his big shots and actually when he fought him Tyson Fury dominated the fight he did the impossible 11 year reign and he stripped him of his titles he went to his backyard and he actually beat Vladimir Klitschko nobody was giving him any chances at all anyway he won over all, all of his belts now before um, they fought that fight there was a clause in the contract to say that if Tyson Fury beat Vladimir Klitschko then he would have to face him in a rematch before he could fight anyone else so as soon as Tyson Fury won the titles he was supposed to fight um, or defend his IBF title and because he didn't do that because he was saying that he was obligated under the terms of the contract to fight Vladimir Klitschko in a second fight he was stripped of his title by the IBF and this evening sorry yesterday evening this weekend we saw Martins and Glasgow fight for that IBF title and Martins came out victorious and that puts a little spanner in the works because now Deontay Wilder has a few options <coughs> excuse me um, now he can fight Alexander Povetkin okay but the WBC and the IBF will allow Deontay Wilder and Glas and Martins to fight so that will be a unification fight so Deontay Wilder may not have to fight Povetkin. What he could do is fight Martins, who is an American. He's currently undefeated. He's won the IBF title, the vacant IBF title. And the IBF and the WBC may allow them to get it on if there's a title on the line. And it is a unification bout because Wilder has a WBC belt and Martins has the IBF belt. Now, if Deontay Wilder goes for the IBF belt and he beats Martins then it's really good because if Tyson Fury does beat Vladimir Klitschko in the return which I believe he will then that is going to be a mega mega unification bout between Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder so <clears throat> that will be a massive fight and hopefully the, those fights will happen so the heavyweight division is really really heating up who knows let's see what's happening and um we just have to watch and wait and see. I think Tyson Fury is so good for British boxing and heavyweight boxing. You know, who thought that Tyson Fury would have won the heavyweight championship of the world and dethroned Klitschko? It's been a fantastic 2015 year for him. He also won Ring Magazine Champion of the Year. No, sorry, Fighter of the Year Ring Magazine awarded him that and he was really really happy a lot of people are saying well Tyson Fury didn't deserve to win that title but if you want me to be honest I believe he did before he fought Vladimir Klitschko everybody was saying that this man didn't stand a chance he didn't deserve it he was going to get knocked out and then when he did dethrone Klitschko everybody was saying well Klitschko was over the hill it just seems that Tyson Fury can't win now everywhere he goes controversy follows this man he says things about <clears throat> homosexuality he says things about <laughs> women sexism and he gets a lot of positive and a lot of negative publicity but it's good for boxing in my opinion whether you like him or whether you hate him you're going to pay to watch him fight because you want to see him win or you want to see him lose so i think it's really really good for british boxing and for heavyweight boxing as a whole so the division is really really warming up now if Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury meet, 
Who knows? Who wins that fight? I don't know. I mean, it's very, very difficult to say. Tyson Fury is very, very awkward. But, you know, he hasn't doesn't hit too hard. I think Deontay Wilder is very athletic. I think he's very, very powerful. And I personally think um, it's open. I don't know who would win that fight. Tyson Fury is a very good boxer. Please, please do not underestimate him. But we've got so many fighters and heavyweights in the mix. As I say, we have the return of the haymaker, David Hay. We've got Deontay Wilder. We've got Tyson Fury. We've got the Klitschko rematch coming up. We've got a new IBF champion. And also, I mean, David Chisora was up and about this um, this weekend. As soon as, um, you know, Martins won the IBF title, he went to the press conference and he respectfully offered him out. And he said to him, look, if you want to fight me, man, I'm ready to fight you. Let's, let's get it on. And, um, you know, listen, at the end of the day, you've got to respect... Um, you know, Derek Chisora for going there and saying, you know, I want to I wanna challenge you for the title because, you know, he really wants that world title and he, you know, he deserves it. He works hard. He's fighting regularly now and he's trying to put himself in the mix. So we shall see what happens. Watch this space. Please like, comment, share and most importantly, subscribe. This is Let's Talk Boxing signing.